Um, and so we have three incredible panelists that have been working with us to uh, really build out our, our community. And um, so we have Rebecca Michael from Ventures Washington and is the coalition lead for uh, organizing monthly coalition meetings with home folks out of Washington State. Uh, and then we have Tanya Hertz, who is uh, very involved with our local San Diego Get Cooking program. And she runs the REC uh, Innovation Lab at Miramar College and is also a professor at SDSU. Um, and then we have Katya Callahan, who um, is the creator of a 20,000 plus Facebook group, East Lake Food to Go, and was very involved in organizing the community back when San Diego was trying to push forward and implement, as well as now connecting people uh, you know, with, with food. So um, I'm going to stop sharing screen and we will move to uh, spotlighting our panelists. Um, and if you all could just actually um, introduce yourselves and uh, a little bit of, you know, what what you uh, you know what you do and uh, and how you got involved. Excellent. I can start if you want to. Hello, okay. good afternoon, everyone. My name is Katya Callahan, and I'm just a community member. You know, passion about community passion about food and passion about helping others. So um, I created this support, you know, um, platform, Facebook page that, you know, during the COVID that, you know, it's just all not small businesses, but also, you know, uh, brick and mortar or anything um, that it's, you know, food related, uh, food related and community um, to support each other. So I'm a truly believer that, you know, in this movement, and I was so incredible, um, grateful to be part of it and um, still connect, you know, connect the dots so a lot of people can, you know, um, utilize this in the best way they can. So thank you for having me over. Awesome. So I think I'll jump in uh, next if that's all right, Rebecca. Yeah, My go name ahead. Awesome. My name is Tanya Hertz. I am Associate Professor of Entrepreneurship at San Diego Miramar College. I'm also the director of the Rec Innovation Lab, which is a business incubator at Miramar College and uh, also a professor at San Diego State University. And I got involved in the MECOS movement uh, and, and really in uh, offering support to home-based uh, food businesses right when I started hearing about AB 626. And as soon as I heard about it, we started a big letter writing campaign with my classes and we all uh, we all got behind it. And now I've been working with, with Roya and with uh, the Cook Alliance and uh, with the rest of the San Diego Food Justice Project on offering entrepreneurship and business training and support to uh, to those home based um, businesses, and uh, we're doing it as a part of part of a, a grant. We're offering uh, funds for for those um, home home cooks, and we're having a lot of success, and we're having a lot of fun, and and um, I'm loving to see this network uh, build and grow in the community, build and grow. So thank you for having me here, and um, I'll pass it now over to Rebecca. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rebecca Michael. I am the advocacy coordinator at Ventures Nonprofit. We are located um, in the Pacific Northwest in Seattle, Washington. Um, and our mission at Ventures is to empower individuals with limited resources, but unlimited potential uh, to improve their lives through small business ownership. And how we do that is we provide um, business training, capital, coaching, hands-on learning opportunities for our, uh, for our um, ventures entrepreneurs, um, including um, things like business incubators, uh, to Tanya's point. Um, we serve um, about 72% um, uh, individuals who identify as women, women of color is around 66%, 33% um, of our um, of our clients slash entrepreneurs are immigrants, and around 30% are uh, uh, identified in Latinx community. Uh, and in the uh, Department of Advocacy, so we engage those um, um, clients slash entrepreneurs 
and then folks outside our organization um, to advocate for you know systemic um, change and to increase access to uh, entrepreneurship because as we all know there's lots of barriers um, and we've this is going to in 2023, we are running our Meekles bill for the third time and i um, really excited to be here, really excited to talk about um, building community and, and being in community in this moment um, is super amazing. Thank you. Thanks so much to, to all of you. So I have a few uh, individual questions and then I'll open it up to uh, questions to all of you. But um, starting with you, Katia, you, you uh, could you tell us about how you started East Lake Food to Go and how it's really grown into this huge community that supports all different types of food businesses, but but also you know provides valuable insight and resources for Migos. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you. Um, so well, um, you know, East Lake Food to Go just started. You know, just uh, during the pandemic. You know, everybody, you know, went through like, um, what do we do? Who's going to cook? You know, what's going to happen? You know, all these, um, you know, people, you know, re reinventing their wheels and people that lost their jobs. So, um, like I said, I'm very heavily involved in the community um, where I live. And, um, you know, it just happened to start contacting people, you know, I contacted restaurants, chefs that lost their jobs, you know, contacted me and, and wanting to just said, what do we do? You know, what can, you know, how can we be part of this group? So I start adding everybody, you know, to the, so it's just a support platform that I do on my volunteer time. And I do it, you know, because I, I'm passionate, like I said, about um, the community. So, um, um, everything just, you know, start crumbling, people start cooking, people, you know, um, start, um, you know, just working on seeing how could they survive. So, um, you know, when I started working with, uh, you know, with uh, Roya and Karen and um, Aureni told me about this, um, you know, Miko's um, movement, I was like, blown up and I said, you know, I don't want to be, you know, watching the news. I, you know, there was so many negativity, um, you know, during the pandemic that, you know, I said, I'm just going to focus myself in, you know, helping others. So um, we probably used to meet every day, um, every other day, two or three times, um, you know, or four a week with Roy and Karen and, um, you know, helping others because a lot of people, they are just really scared and they were cooking and, you know, I was navigating the media all night, you know, probably, you know, like 12 or 13 hours a day and discovering that so many, um, you know, home cooks and, um, and all these, um, you know, other, um, you know, groups and Instagram selling food, you know, and it really concerned me about food safety. And that's what I just said, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to go forward. I'm going to support this movement. And I want to be, you know, the, the, you know, like the, the person that can, you know, hopefully, you know, or, uh, you know, um, guide others and, um, you know, I help them, you know, to, 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 to just achieve their dreams. You know, there's a lot of, you know, um, very heavily uh, in, where I live here in Chula Vista in, um, in San Diego that they are, you know, foreign and, um, uh, you know, the only thing that they know, um, you know, immigrating to here, you know, it's a very diverse community was just like cooking that or baking. That's the only thing they knew how to do. You know, they never worked and, um, you know, they were helping their husbands that lost their jobs. There were unfortunately a lot of, you know, um, a couple of them that, you know, they are on the works right now. They are taking the training still that it's incredible to do that grant. They're very grateful. So unfortunately they lost their spouses during COVID and um, that's it. They had the language barrier and they only had two hands and good, you know, um, we call, um, you know, good um, cooking skills. So they either start baking and going through the process, you know, of, you know, legalizing that and also, you know, um, starting their makeup process. Now they are, you know, um, doing um, what they love to do, what it's incredible. So I do get like probably, um, 10, 15 messages, you know, sometimes, you know, during the week, 
in how can they, you know, how can they do this? How can I apply? Um, do they have Spanish classes? The How do I do this? I want to be part of it. So, you know, we're very grateful that, you know, we have all these resources and I always, you know, um, probably bombard Roya, you know, sharing your information and Karen's and questions and, you know, sharing our, you know, Miko's, um, you know, page, support page. And, you know, it's incredible to see um, that I have seen on the two years that the, pe the page started, um, people growing like Diana, like Malcolm, you know, just pe people just, just, you know, doing it the right way without being, you know, stressed out about being, you know, um, under the shadow, like, you know, hiding, worrying about that, you know, and I, that's what I always tell everybody, you know, how grateful it is to be able to just, you know, put in every single platform in the media, like, here's my food, here's what I do, and doing it legally and doing it right. It is incredible to see how, you know, many people are just on the right direction, on the right path, and, you know, just growing and learning from that, you know, so it's just been, you know, incredible. So I'll pass it to the, to the next panelist. Thank you so much, Katya. And it's, it's been really inspiring to see how your group has grown. I mean, you're managing now a Facebook group with over 20,000 people in it, really like building a community that helps each other out. So, um, so thanks for sharing that story. So I'm going to move to Tanya. Um, and uh, our specific question for you is, is if you could talk about a little bit more the Get Cooking program and how it's moving forward, but what role community plays in it? Because obviously there are classes um, you know, for entrepreneurs, but there is also a heavy emphasis on community and you yourself have, have built so many communities that, that, is, that are you know, playing into helping provide this, this role and support. All right, there we go. There we go. I was muted there for a second. Thanks for, for fixing that, Roya. Yes, absolutely. Community is, is integral. So uh, the Get Cooking program, this is a this is a, a, a joint grant that we are uh, that we are uh, we initiated. We're in the pilot phase right now. We're almost done with the first cohort of training for this. And the participants go through eight weeks of training. So they learn about marketing, they learn about finance, they learn about a uh, contract law, they learn about the, the basics that they need to know about business. And all of that is so important, yes. But I I, I feel, and I've, I've had a lot of other people uh, say to me as well, that the most important thing that they're getting out of this is the community, is that network of, of other people who have either gone through the, the process already or are going through it at the same time and they're uh, and they're finding people that they can lean on and that they can reach out to and that they can connect with and and they're uh, and they're finding that that their marketing actually works when they have other people who are there lifting them up and helping them out and sharing their posts and 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 getting the conversations going and the engagement going and so um, so yes, the, the education component of it is important and the, the, the money is important as well, right? At the end of the training, they get between 20, uh, 2,500 and 7,500. That's important, but still with all of that, the, the most important thing I, I feel is, is that community, is that connection and their ability to help each other, all of us to, to lift each other up. That's how I feel about it. Thank you so much. Really, really powerful. Um, moving to Rebecca. Rebecca, you, I mean, obviously Washington has been working for years to try to get uh, legislation moving forward, but, um, you know, now there's a, a huge coalition that you all have, have helped build and are facilitating on a monthly basis and was hoping you could kind of talk about that experience of bringing people together and how that's informing the legislation and how you're all working together. Yeah, of course. Thank you, Roya. Um, so coalition building is key, as we all know, um, in this movement, um, not only locally, um, but also nationwide. So being in a space like this today is um, really uplifting and important. Uh, and as Roya said, I've said, we've, we've been working on this bill now I think we'll have said like almost six years as an, as an organization and we've run it twice. Um, and when we ran in 20, 2020, 2021, 
that's when the pandemic hit and we were really close to getting it passed. Um, part of why it, it didn't pass is, uh, is because of COVID. Uh, and so the organization saw that as, in terms of our work in advocacy, um, is it was to take a step back and to look at and evaluate you know, what was going well in terms of running the bill and what strategies we needed as an organization to change in order uh, in, in order to get the bill passed. And one of those things was um, putting together a coalition. Uh, so when I started with Ventures um, nearly a year ago, um, I was, you know, worked with my colleagues, including Will, um, another colleague, and then Joey, who was on the call, shout out Joey, um, to, uh, to, to create a coalition of ventures, entrepreneurs, and then invite other community members, and then our partner organizations, um, including, uh, including the Cook Alliance, uh, and really advertising this as an economic development bill, and and a way to build community. So, um, so we started advertising and, and um, doing, you know, personal touch base or touch points with our ventures entrepreneurs, um, some of which you are new to the organization um, or, or and or folks who um, had uh, participated in our advocacy work around this bill over the last, you know, three or four years. Um, and then we invite the general public. Um, and it's been really powerful to, to be in a space once a month with a group of, um, you know, sometimes up to 70 people that um, are really passionate about um getting this legislation passed, um, who are curious about what the legislation is, who may be operating in the shadows, as Oreo likes to say, um, which is so true, um, and want to need the, this permitting process to pass and be um, the best version that it can be in order to support communities. We have really engaging conversations around, gosh, I know someone who's doing this, and you know, they're fearful for, um, they're fearful for, of um, the government finding out and, and being arrested. They're feel for, feel fearful that ICE is going to come um, and, and take them away from their families. Um, but they're really passionate about what they do and they want to care for them, themselves and their families and they need to be financially stable. We have other folks who are like, oh my gosh, I want to do this. We got to get this passed so I can create my, you know, create my business. Um it's it's really fun, but it's and it's a it's but it's also a lot of hard work because we recognize the institutional barriers and then the um, the power that those those that the institution has, and so we got to be really strategic and work really hard to to change narratives and to educate and to change minds and hearts. Thank you so much. That the. I'm, I'm in awe of all, all three of you and the community work that you're all doing. Um, we've, we have a number of people calling in from, from all over and they're you know, groups that are hyper-local, whether it's just in one city or an entire state nationwide, you know, very diverse. And, and so my question is, um, what is your advice for other community builders you know, and that are hoping to start these coalitions and, um, and provide resources? Do you, is there anything that you would really say, like, this is, this is the advice I'd give you to, to continue to, to work in the community and get like a good number of people together that come back on, a, that are engaged and collaborating and come back on a, on a monthly or a weekly or however long it'll take to, to move things forward? Um, and I'll just go in the same order that we've been going in. So, uh, Kathy, if you want to start. All right. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so, you know, like I said, I'm a truly believer of, you know, of community. So um, this is great. So I will advise, like, if anyone, you know, anywhere else that, you know, that you, that you want this movement to start, just, you know, just network, you know, talk to, you know, everyone, you know, look at, you know, your local, you know, uh, resources pages, you know, I think so, you know, Facebook for our generation is huge. Also Instagram, you know, you can just name it, you know, like anyone it's engaged and just start, you know, you know, um, 
you know, uh, just be fearless. You know, that's what I did. You know, like, you know, like every time I will see somebody that will be, you know, um, interested of doing that or selling their stuff, you know, I would just reach out, you know, and, and, and try to find an email and send a message, you know, and, you know, sometimes I'm like, they answer you and then it's like, okay, there's hope. So then you just get this, you know, people engagement. And I see, I think so community engagement, it's huge. So, you know, just, you know, just network and, 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 uh, you know, with your local community and, and start something that, you know, it starts very, really little. And then, you know, in known time, you will just see something huge, you know, if you are constant, you know, doing, you know, um, you know, um, you know, put it that, you know, energy into it. And, you know, you can just, you know, be an advocate for others. And um, I think so. It's great. And uh, thank you for, for uh, thank you, Katya, and thank you for un, uh, meeting me there, Raya. So uh, uh, agreed, agreed, uh, connect with as many people as you can who share common interests. So we we do a lot of social media marketing in entrepreneurship uh, nowadays, and, and we love the fact that we can actually uh, connect with, uh, you know, find people and connect with people uh, who, who uh, fit certain demographics and, and beyond just connecting with people uh, online, it's important to engage with people as well. And so I, I would just recommend take every single opportunity that you can to, uh, to engage with others who are, um, who, who share common interests and, uh, or, or that you can help in some way or can help you in some way and, and, and take advantage of every networking opportunity that you can can find go to things like this go to things in person just uh I, I i tell my entrepreneurship students just right now is the time to say yes to everything just say yes right now and 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 just go and do and and uh, your network will will grow exponentially and uh and the bigger and and uh, broader more diverse and also deeper your network is um the higher prob the probability is that you'll succeed and so uh we really uh, i encourage it to all of my students and 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 really anybody who who wants to to do more we do more when when we when we do it together so um i, I really encourage that collaboration networking and, and uh, engagement so that's my little two cents there <laughs> I absolutely agree with uh, Katya and Tanya. Um, networking, you know, trying to get, um, you know, using social media as a tool to um, to connect with folks, to stay to staying engaged with folks. Um, a couple of things that um, I, that we really think about within our coalition um, is, um, and and as an organization too, is um, centering those who are closest to the issue area. And lifting their voices up, um, and depending on one, like an individual's um, identity and positionality, like me, for example, I didn't, I, I identify as a white woman and um, have a tremendous amount of privilege, not only, um, you know, in in those identities, but also in my role as working for a nonprofit. Um, so, depending on one's positionality understanding where one's own um, privileges fall within being in those spaces and taking ownership of that and really being aware and working to center the needs and solutions of those that are closest to the issue. Because um, this work isn't about me as an individual, it's about us as a community. Um, and it's, this is, and also this is a marathon, not a sprint. The work of community building and advocacy, it takes a long time. So the way I like to think about it is this is a marathon, not a sprint, and you're gonna stop at certain mileposts and have celebrations and get awesome things done, but you, you're still working toward the end goal. And then even when a bill passes, there's still work to do. So. It, it takes time, but also recognize where your privilege lies and then how you can use that privilege to be very genuine in creating relationships and centering those who are closest to the issue. I love it. Agreed, agreed. Authentic, authenticity and, and, and helping others. I love it. Yeah. Thank you. 
Thank you all so much for those answers. One of the uh, comments in the chat too, and please feel free to start asking questions in the chat. We're gonna open up it up in a little bit to audience questions and, and collaboration because you know together we are a community. Um, but uh, this year's conference uh, is that there are power in numbers, and and the comment in the chat is there's power in people, and so um, you know taking that whole concept of power in numbers, power in people, just wondering if you could speak to that and how it impacts your community work. So uh, uh, since I'm unmuted, I'll just, I'll, I'll speak uh, uh, quickly. Um, uh, I, I'll say that that's one thing I learned very, very early on is that when you, when you don't have a focus of, of competition, but instead collaboration, you can do so much more. You can you can get so much further and so much faster when when you help each other. And and I'm I, I actually I love the entrepreneurship ecosystem here in San Diego because I feel like it's a really really well interconnected, supportive, uh, wonderful place for for people who uh, who maybe before didn't get that kind of welcoming, open arms support. So so uh, you know. We we really have. There are a lot of women. There are a lot of of, of minorities. There are a lot of of people that maybe uh, before just didn't feel as comfortable in this ecosystem. I feel like now it is a very welcoming place, and so I think that uh, that that's that's a good thing. And I think that's why we can do so much here. And I think that's why we are doing so much, and and we're helping so many people because there's so many of us helping, right? So it, it makes it a good thing. So that's all I have. Yes, I do agree with um, with Tanya that, you know, it's it just, you know, um, there's always that fear, like they said, but there's like 20 people doing the same thing. What, why? But there's like, you know, five, you know, seven, 20, you know, 100, you know, uh, bakers, but we all have our unique thing. We all have our unique, uh, you know, our uh, networking, our, you know, people around us. And, you know, I think so there's consumers for everything, for everyone. So, you know, power numbers, I think so. You just have to believe in yourself. You just have to, you know, believe in what you're doing and, um, you know, just, you know, just go out there, be fearless and just be you. And, um, you know, like I said, you know, community will always, be behind you you know it uh, always I have and, and also what I have seen too is like when you support others like if you know like a family need and you just give back that little bit you know and just put it out there that thing it could explode you know because I think so we just all build like I'm here for you you're here for me and you know creating all this you just you know you will not believe it the sky will be little for you to reach so you know I just encourage everybody just not to be fearless to do what you love to do and just you know just go out there and do it the right way so those are you know what I like to tell everybody so I can pass it to Rebecca oh I think you're Oh, you. I'm back. Sorry. Oh, the mute button. It's always something. Um, thank you, Katya. Real quick, just shout out to Natalie. She's a ventures entrepreneur. Um, thanks for sharing space with us today, Natalie. Um, um, this is a big question to answer, um, but I think at the um, for me, the heart of it is is through this process of of creating and building and and moving forward in this coalition is that I'm consistently um, meeting folks who, um, like, I guess, who have operated in, in the shadows, um, Amicos in the shadows in, in Washington State, or maybe um, in even outside the state. Um, and that f folks, people understand that this is, this is something that is not new, Amicos are not new, um, and that they, that they realize the importance of um, and, and the wanting to help folks get into the formal economy, um, and they and and they're willing to share what they think are the benefits, um, and they're really um, like willing to fight for um, like fight like fight for that privilege or fight for that right, if you will. Um, Adventures. We have um, entrepreneurs who own a variety of business with businesses, whether they're product based or service based, and we have um, like non non um, non food operating businesses who come to our meetings and are like, "I'm a small business owner too. We share that identity, even though we don't have the same type of business." 
And I know I want you to be successful just, just as I have the opportunity to be successful because some of these regulations are, are already in place. In addition to that, we have a we have some folks who just share word of mouth um, and from our meetings. And um, you know, each month we have a, a kind of a core group that that is uh, that regularly attend our coalition meetings. And we also have new people every single month, which is really exciting. So it's an opportunity for us to get to know new people, to get the message out there, and to help center their needs and their um, experiences and solutions. Um, so it, I hope that that answers the question. Um, but yeah, the power of numbers is is very really transformative in any in any advocacy space. Um, and in this one, I think the power numbers is what's hopefully going to push us over the line and get the bill passed. Wonderful. Thank you all for your, your insightful answers. You all have somewhat touched a little bit about this, um, about the technology that you used, you know, mentioning social media and how we come together. I know, Rebecca, you all use Eventbrite. Katya, you know, you're a maven of social media, have grown this huge group um, with Facebook and Instagram, and you do lives all the time. Um, and Tanya, you have all of these incredible technology resources and tools through, you know, the universities that you, you work with, whether it's Canvas and, you know, sharing YouTube videos. So I was wondering if you could all maybe touch upon the technology tools that you use to um, uplift the community. I mean, even, even looking at Zoom, the fact that we're all together today from all over the country, um, just uh, if you have advice on, on what tools to use, how to learn what tools to use and what you, you all are using to, to be successful. Um, I can start on that, you know, Facebook, a lot of people, they, you know, they don't like much Facebook, but I think so it's a huge platform because a lot of like people that, you know, that now are in a certain age, it's, you know, we still use Facebook a lot. So I use Facebook a lot. I do lives and I will suggest to everyone that, you know, that it's out there just not to be fear about trying anything for what I've seen. And I'm, you know, representing like, you know, thousands of cooks, restaurants and everything. And I follow a lot of like big foodies, organic pictures, organic posts are the ones that they will just, you know, more personalized, more than sharing anything. So I use that. Um, I, and I, I seen a lot of people doing that. Um, you know, um, Instagram, it's another also incredible thing because it's more visual. And I think so we can spend hours doing that. So, you know, sharing it on both platforms is great. Canva, it's incredible, a great tool. And um, Canva is, um, it's, you know, uh, just a nap that you can use to do, you know, um, your, um, you know, a flyers or a reel. I think so. A lot of people I do, I, I tried, I seen reels being a huge, you know, um, thing right now. Um, and now even YouTube, it's doing, you know, um, you know, uh, reels as well. So, you know, I think so if you use that and, you know, just do it constantly, you know, you just have to believe in that. You have to do it every day. I post, and this is not, you know, I don't have a business or anything, but I do it on all the platforms to to help the um, the community and help all the, you know, um, all the, you know, the the the, you know, food, um, all the foodies and everything. Um, I use a, I post sometimes three, four times a day, you know, but you know, it's just the more the repetitive, you know, branding yourself, it's just gonna, you know, uh, create a huge impact. So. I will say um, the same thing that I, I, I tell uh, the entrepreneurship students, and that is that you go where your customers are and uh, you know find out where your customers are and then be there. Be there all the time. Consistency is, is the key. Just like Katya was saying, uh, uh, when using technology, I, we find that a lot of a lot of uh, students that come to us, or I say students because I'm just in the in the education in the education realm, but b small business owners, um, entrepreneurship students, uh, people who are who have either uh, recently started or about to start their businesses, they they need a little push when it comes to their their marketing, and they need a little bit of help with that uh, technology. And once they get that, that's when they really, really, really grow. And I agree uh, uh, with with uh, with Katya with Roya. We were talking about uh, 
the the videos posting of videos and the reason why we we really encourage them to post videos TikTok YouTube everywhere is um not only do people like engaging with visually appealing content uh but but also uh, a lot of a lot of the business owners don't realize that that that's the best kind of SEO that you can get especially when you take a video and you post it on YouTube and then take that YouTube link and post it um so, somewhere else all of the words that you say are keywords that are now searchable on Google that help you with your search engine optimization, your search engine optimization. And so you can really dominate uh, Google for, for very, very little money by just being in there, engaging regularly, uh, posting regularly. And, um, and, and when you use uh, uh, specifically tools, uh, uh, social media platforms like like LinkedIn, which you would think, well, that's not one of the most popular platforms. We should be encouraging people to do TikTok. Well, yes, but uh, the fact that Google that, that Google uh, gives gives a preferential <laughs> placement to uh, you know to sites that have lots of redirects and links, uh, it really uh, helps again with the businesses so that they can um, their search and op optimization can be at its. Uh, you know, at its peak, and they can be all over Google for very, very little money, and they can compete with the big firms by by just um, posting themselves and posting regularly. So, uh, yeah, that's one thing that we're really encouraging a lot right now. Yeah. Rebecca, do you have any any others that, that you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Um, Roya mentioned, like, the big thing that we use is um, Eventbrite, um, and... I was new to using Eventbrite when I first started the coalition. So I've learned a lot about Eventbrite. It's actually a pretty cool platform. Um, and I've been incorporating tags, mm -hmm. um, like the hashtags. Um, so things like, you know, like small business, like home cooking, home, you know, things like, like micro business, um, that really helps to drive, um, the registration, um, and then, uh, the, are the, the RSVPs and, and folks that show up, um, Zoom, of course, to, to Roya's point again, um, we have folks throughout Washington State and then through, um, and then because we are on Eventbrite, we have folks from um, from outside of Washington. Um, in our last meeting, we had someone from Kansas. In a previous meeting, we had someone from Texas. Um, and we have had folks as well um, from Montana and, of course, California. Um, so those, I would say, are the, like the, um, I guess, the, the most popular um, technology tools that we use. Uh, and um, we're working on um, focusing more on our own sort of ventures branded um, uh, like um, social media tools such as LinkedIn, Instagram, uh, and then updating our website as the legislative um, session um, gets rolling around here in 2023. Um, well, we're getting there. It's it's a it's a lot to the 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 comms is so important, and it's a lot to it's a it's a lot to navigate. Um, but we're getting there. When did you, if you don't mind me asking, when did you start using using Eventbrite? How long ago was it? Um, from personally, um, a year ago. Okay. Yeah. I was going to, I was just, the reason I was asking is because I noticed in the last year or so, how many people were getting through Eventbrite. And I didn't expect that. I didn't, I didn't know that it would be as powerful as it actually is. And we, we get a lot of people from also all over the country um, because of Eventbrite, which was kind of shocking to me, but especially in the last year, I didn't know if something changed or I don't know, but it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I I don't know either. It is a, is a tool that the organization has used in years past to schedule um, different events throughout the organization. Um, so I just they were like, we use Eventbrite, and I said, great. Yeah, I'm going to use Eventbrite. Let's do it. Right, right. When I saw somebody put next door also for local promotion, yeah, absolutely. We see a lot. I mean, uh, I was uh, another one that kind of shocked me. I didn't expect to get as much. Uh, you know, responses we got out of next door, but great, great, great for local. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, those are that's next door is good, you know, and, and for the home cooking, it's, it's great and um, it's a secure site. And also, you know, what I did too, and you know, I encourage anyone to do it. And um, I just put, you know, myself, I uh, just talked to, you know, um, our local, you know, like 
you know, there's a hotel here where I we live. And I just talked to them and I, I said, can we host a, a networking place? So I just host one once a month and I invite everybody to come over. They bring some, you know, food to sample. And, you know, it's just, you know, it's a great, you know, um, resource to, you know, connect with each other. So, you know, it's just, really easy to do it any you know any places even your HOA sometimes they will let you do that you know so I encourage everyone just you know to just uh, go out there and start your little network you know and um, you know it's great so thank you uh, Roya yeah. for having me over I, I love I love that Kati you kind of brought it all back to we, we were talking about technology but that you also are still holding these in-person forums and there's you know at the end of the day you all talked about at the networking being able to share food and culture that's what this entire movement is about so being able to to do that um, if anyone has any questions where we have about two minutes left in this panel um, if anyone you know wants to raise their hand and unmute and, and make, say a good comment, and if not, then I'll just turn it back over to our panelists for just final parting words. Can I go first real quick, y'all? Oh, Michelle, go ahead, sorry. Okay, Michelle, you should be able to unmute and ask your question. I am not doing the video right now, but um, I am a part of the East Lake Food to Go group. I, I joined up when I lost my job and um, was at home needing to find something. And I'm one of the underground, I guess I called myself a gray market cook because <laughs> it was just a, uh, not technically legal. And I, I knew it was not, but um, so I was kind of afraid to like post things at first. Um, and, and then I was thinking, okay, well, when, uh, someone comes knocking, I guess I'll, I'll answer those questions then. No one yet has used the site, to, I think, to hunt anyone down, which is an awesome thing. Um, and it has grown not only to people within the local East Chula Vista, but there's people from outside of our area that look to that group to find things for their own little, whether it's their food at home or they're gonna order something for a party. And so it's expanded beyond just um, our local community. Uh, it, and it's been great. I've um, sometimes just don't wanna cook and I'll see what's on for today. Who's, who's, who's having something. So I think it's something similar to that Josephine concept, except that people weren't necessarily placing orders um, you know, some, some people were placing orders from by looking at the pictures and some were just like sharing their, their experiences like, oh, I tried that. That's really good. And, um, and one of the things that the rules of the group is to not, we try to keep, uh, any negative posts and, um, the members themselves are now helping Katya by like telling people, oh, that's not part of the rules or, uh, whatever to, to help just encourage just a, a sense of positivity. And um, I'm just so thankful for the group. I'm still, uh, you know, under the table gray, but hoping to to get out there soon. I'm just really looking like Malcolm, I'm, I'm sort of detail oriented. So I keep looking at all the laws. I'm like, oh, can I go there? No, I cannot. Um, what's, uh, what's great about the course that I'm in now with the with the first cohort of the of the class that's being offered, um, it did really help to centralize a lot of the, where is this information and where is that information? When, cause even though there's Google, it'll tell you 10,000 things. And so you kind of get lost when you're trying to find what do I need to just uh, get up and running. So some of, um, some of this has been really great. I'm, I'm hoping to really uh, do better. Thanks so much for the, for the opportunity. Yeah, no, that, thanks, Michelle. Yeah, I was just going to say I'm I'm so glad that you that you were brave and posted uh, nonetheless, and that that didn't get you in any hot water. And I'm really glad that you're part of that first cohort, and and that's really what we're hoping to do with this, you know, with this project is is to to help everybody to learn what they need to do to to get legal, so that they can really you know stand up and shout out loud and 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 be proud. So um, yeah, I'm glad to hear that. It makes me really happy. 
Thanks so much. Well, we're we're up on our time. Just one final thank you. If you if either of you have like a last sentence you want to share with the group. But again, thank you for being here. Go Miko. <laughs> That's all I got to say. <laughs> thank you, Roya. Thank you, Rebecca. Connect, thank you, Tanya. Thank you so much. Connect thank with you us. All. I find contact information in there too. I hope to connect with all of you and our networks can get bigger.